All right, what's up, everybody? This is Doctor Fatbody, and I am here to show you guys Gunstar Heroes. Uh, Gunstar Heroes was released in 1994 by a company named Treasure. Treasure is famous for a lot of different games, such as shoot 'em ups like Radiant Silver Gun and Ikaruga. Uh, also, you know stuff we've seen in GDQ before, such as this game, Dynamite Heady. Um, there's a whole lot of tech to come to you guys. Um, but first, in this first little intro section, I guess the first thing I'd like to mention is uh, we are looking for uh, one of two weapons. Uh, we are either looking for the laser or the chaser to add to our flame, because those are the two optimal weapons we run in this game. Uh, there's been a bit of a debate in the community about which one is actually better. Um, Jim SR actually was nice enough to do a theory task for us, which was absolutely phenomenal if you haven't had a chance to check that out yet please do so and uh, now we are on dice palace dice palace is the trolliest part in the game uh, I also believe this is gonna be the best part for donations so people can uh, take their time to guess how many one rolls we're gonna get if we're gonna get way back space etc and the big gimmick about uh, dice palace is that we have a dice that drops uh, similar to uh, things we've seen in cuphead before in other games and gunstar superheroes only difference here is we can't actually manipulate the die. The die itself uh, changes uh, it changes what number is going to be dropped multiple times a frame. So every single frame, it's not even it's it's not one thing or the other. It's it's a multitude of things that we have to get through. And you know, Dice Palace's biggest gimmick is the way back space. Uh, if you look all the way at the end of the board, you see a space that says the way back. If we hit that, that actually brings us back to the start of the entire. Dice Palace, uh, forcing us to go back through, uh, loses about three minutes. It is a very real thing that can happen during the run. But I think it would be uh, almost fitting for it to happen during GDQ so we can show off more of this uh, amazing game. And then we also get to go for the meme that is 100%. 100% is a meme started by uh, my, myself, Dagger, and Jim SR. And basically, it's you fill up every space with clear spaces for Dice Palace because it is impossible to do, and it's only been done one time recorded so far. So. Uh, for the rest of these stages, I'm just going to let uh, the character play. Uh, if we have any donations, it'd be perfect time. Alright, so coming up we have uh, one of the newer strats that was pioneered uh, by myself. And actually, we stand up in this, uh, the top right corner of the stage waiting for black to spawn in. And we then proceed to do seven standing slides. Uh, the standing slides are done by doing a half circle back to forward motion, followed by the shoot button. And that allows us to uh, do a ton of physical damage to black. One of the key things in the speed run that we're going to be keeping an eye out for is all of the different physical strats we have. Uh, things such as throws on boss characters, uh, standing slides, and manipulating iframes are huge in this run. And then coming up next, we have our first auto-scroller. And there isn't a ton to talk about in the beginning, so this would be a good place for donations. Actually, one thing worth noting, you'll see we position our character on the right side of the screen and hold down. 
I actually don't need to shoot or do anything here. Um, with the position of Gunstar Red, he actually dodges all physical attacks and shots done by enemy characters in this section. The only things that we actually have to shoot are these mines that come on the screen that allow us to transition into the next section. And you'll see there on the first one we didn't because there's no real time, time loss or time save from the first one. Another thing worth note is in this section was one of the first examples of why we see uh, or the reason why we used uh, fixed shot as opposed to or free shot as opposed to fixed shot. Uh, this actually allows us to be able to uh, still move our character around and shoot, which is uh, you know pretty useful for a run like this. Another thing worth note is all of those bird enemies that drop weapons are entirely RNG and cycle dependent. So what weapon they have will correspond to the current loaded RNG as well as the time that you got on uh, that part of the stage from console one. Fun fact, GDQ's very own Maiku Yama was actually one of the first speedrunners of this game. He did the game in uh, expert mode. I want to say with a time of somewhere around 45 minutes. Maybe a little bit lower, maybe like a 44. And then so coming up here is one thing that new runners uh, sometimes tend to not look for. So basically, uh, our M. Bison looking fellow here will start throwing characters out and you can damage him basically as soon as he's on screen. We actually want to wait until the train is all the way on the right side of its oscillation so that when we destroy M. Bison, it actually leaves the stage as fast as possible so it doesn't have to finish the cycle of going to the right and then going to the left. Now here we have green. This is Seven Force. Uh, our first spawn from Seven Force is always the same. We always get runner enemy, which is awesome. Now from there, with it being 7 Force, we're actually on easy mode, and so we only get three of the 7 Forces, and basically there's a bit of uh, discrepancy between uh, the three of the second forms that we can get. The first one that we got here, uh, Tail Force, isn't the best of the three, but it doesn't have it induce a whole lot of lag like Sea Urchin does, so it's definitely not the worst either. And on this last one, we actually got the best. We have gun, which as you see, we go back to our crouching on the right hand side of the screen method, and we actually duck under the shots from gun, despite it being pointed uh, basically right up against Gunstar Red. Okay, so here going into pink stage. Pink stage is the uh, one real straightforward stage that you don't have a whole lot to worry about. Uh, you're going to be seeing that during our movement we're actually doing downward kicks in some section. That's avoid. Uh, that's uh, us actually trying to actively avoid lag. And then on the first pink enemy there, we actually do a full hop kick just to see if we're going to be able to uh, actually attack him in the air. Sometimes his iframes will not trigger and we can actually get a quick kill on him. But keeping him in the air in general is actually good due to the fact that it allows us to cause more damage over time. Now. You'll see we went for that again on the second pink enemy. And with these climbs right here, basically you just want to double tap jump while holding forward. And if we hold up forward, it actually messes up the rhythm a tiny bit. And now we have Bravo Man, which Bravo Man, fairly simple boss. You just want to keep the fire in the middle of him towards his head the entire time, and as you see, we kill him before his health even spawns. Alright, so now we are at the second auto-scroller of the game. Um, to note here, we have another cool trick, um, kind of similar to how we positioned ourselves in a very specific space in green stage. 
we are positioning ourselves off stage to one, take no damage and actually reduce lag as much as possible during this section. This would be a good time to go ahead and read donations. And there, so what we saw is another example of just good physical damage over time. Basically, we do one full hop into uh, downward kicks, followed by two standing slides, and if the RNG lines up, the uh, pink shooter actually will not hit us. And so now, we have uh, the third auto-scroller of the run. I know there's a lot of these in certain sections. Thankfully, they're nice and action-packed. But this is just a climb on the way up to orange, so you know this will be another good section for donations if we want to get a couple of those in. One fun thing worth mentioning during this run is that uh, the creators of Gunstar Heroes, Dynamite Eddie, you know, Treasure in general, they're actually uh, a team of ex-Konami employees that worked on games such as Contra 3, The Alien Wars, and Contra Hardcore. And then here in this section, we have a couple different options that we can do. We can throw the bombs at the enemies, or we can just choose to opt out and actually just dodge as many of the shots as we can. I like to dodge shots and just, you know, just mix it up a little bit. It really doesn't matter what we're doing in this section. Uh, the explosions don't cause a ton of lag that actually causes the game to chug. Alright, and on that yellow enemy, basically we wait for him to land and spawn in. Well, we don't want to do the slide too early, otherwise he won't actually have any hittable frames. Or hitboxes, rather. And then here on this little mini boss, you know, nice and easy. We just stand right next to the foot. Another thing worth noting, you're going to see me actually stop for eh, about a second and a half there. That's to allow the stage to actually get to one of its peaks of its oscillation. If we, if we end uh, this section with the graphics on the left hand side midway through what's what actually will happen is a uh, uh, soft lock of the game it's not a hard lock because actually after about a minute and a half's time of the game scrolling through all of its uh, assets it actually brings you back and finishes the level if you have enough health but it breaks us out of bounds and actually puts us past the trigger for uh, uh, orange to transition to the next stage now here this is another strat that i went ahead and developed so as soon as the boss uh, starts, Orange is going to go ahead and flex at us. We basically want to keep ourselves as far away from him as we can while still being in range of a standing slide to do full damage. And whenever he flexes, we can get uh, a total of uh, 700 damage before in, uh, initiating iframes. So if we space the standing slide so that it leaves him right outside of triggering iframes, we can actually throw him and then bait him into doing another flex move, thus allowing us to repeat the pattern over and over again. And as you see, we got no soft lock, so we transition onto the next stage. Now, this stage, this is a. Uh, we uh, know this is the enduro round. Uh, you know, keep your wits about you. There's a whole lot going on here. There's a lot to talk about during this stage, so when we get to it, we will talk. I think the first thing to note is that you'll notice uh, if you look at the input viewer, I'm actually holding up forward while doing all of my jumps. This just allows us to get a little bit more momentum and a little. Uh, 
a little bit more height out of our jumps, you know, just maximizing the movement throughout the stage. In this section, you'll see we shot the barrel. Sometimes during the uh, pink enemies an uh, throwing animation, we can actually shoot that barrel and get an instant kill on them. Haven't absolutely figured out what triggers it to happen or not happen yet. The phantom enemies are still kind of a mystery, even though those who have tested. And then here on uh, Black Phantom, uh, again, just with the rest of the phantoms, you want to keep them in the air so their iframes don't trigger. So that we can get as much damage maximized on them as possible. Now here you're going to see we're going to do a standing slide on these boxes coming up. Sometimes we get through there, sometimes we don't, sometimes we need another one. Uh, it's, uh, real random on if you get through there or not. And then with the pink phantom, you'll saw that we actually went ahead and threw uh, the air turret into them, uh, actually taking advantage of the fact that their health is the same as the blast from that, and instantly killing the enemy as it spawned on screen. Now, if you wait a little bit and allow it to get into a shooting, you, know, you can actually trigger iframes, and you will not take all of that damage. And now here, this section uh, is notable for killing a lot of new runners when they first start, because the spacing of your jump kicks and shooting uh, leaves you a lot of the times after three air jump kicks uh, will leave you right in front of one of the enemies that spawn in, which is just, you know, it's not good for us. Now coming up here we have uh, the first real Smash Daisuke fight. It's the only one we have in the run actually. Uh, I don't know why they didn't use this guy as the final boss, but also notable, he looks a lot like M. Bison and he also does Psycho Crushers, so, you know, no shame there, no shame. You'll see we actually baited him into the Psycho Crusher, which is what we wanted, so we can do a uh, maximum amount of damage and trigger no iframes. And then here we get a standing slide. I actually wasn't ready for the throw. That's a, a very, very new strat that no one has gotten in a run yet. Uh, even tassing it out is very, very hard because sometimes he pulls his gun, sometimes he doesn't. It's really dependent on what Bison wants to do in that situation. We also want to be sure to kill him on the right-hand side of the screen so that he jumps and transitions to the next part of the stage uh, instantly. If you kill him on the left-hand side of the screen, he'll actually have to hop over multiple times and then transition to the stage clear. And then here, this section takes about 45 seconds, so it'd be another good place for a donation. Thank you, Dr. Fatbody. We have a $30 donation. It reads, Greetings from Germany. Alright, so coming up we have another interactable auto-scroller. This time is going to be space. Uh, as you saw in the last scene, uh, they're actually transitioning from where they currently are on the ground in Earth, uh, or actually on Gunstar 9, to uh, space. So, you don't have to track them down, you have to save the homie. One thing uh, that's worth note here is you actually want, on, at least on console, uh, you'll see it's a little bit of a difference if you see someone running this game on emulator, but if you are on console, you want to do as little firing as possible through these sections. All the explosions will actually call indiv cause individual bits of lag, which over time will slow us down. Uh, so you'll see me, I'm just dodging as much as what I can. Uh, the nice thing is if we hit the C button, we actually have an instantaneous uh, mo movement option that adds us a little bit of invincibility. Alright, and I don't, have a, uh, I don't have to talk for a little bit, so I believe this would be another good time for donations. Now here, one thing we will do is, uh, so, you'll see that we have these little asteroids on screen. Um, one cool thing about them is if we actually have the singular fire weapon out, 
um, we can bounce them off of our spaceship, you know, causing us just to be able to chill in the bottom right hand corner for that section and uh, reduce lag. I guess another thing worth noting that I didn't mention uh, in the beginning is that one of the gimmicks in this game that I find phenomenal is uh, we actually, with the weapon system, you can either choose to double up on an item or combine it with another uh, weapon to allow us to have some crazy combinations. Like one you see here is Flame Chaser. Uh, it's considered the best one in the run. Uh, Flame Chaser is really good just because it allows us to do a ton of physical damage over time and actually, uh, you know, pick where our shots are going. So that's always a plus. Uh, and then you'll see we transition back to Singular Fire once more. Um, in this section, we actually have lasers shot at us, um, but if you sit in the top right corner of the stage, you actually avoid any of that. Alright, I believe it's time for another donation. One thing worth noting in this uh, section that's coming up as well is um, here, and I'd say about eh, maybe 45 seconds to a minute, we have an option to actually grab the laser again and swap out for our chaser, which uh, is actually the most optimal weapon to use in space due to, due to the low amount of lag that it causes. Um, it's actually really good in this next uh, green fight that we're going to see. The only issue with that is that uh, you're then stuck with lightsaber for the remainder of the game if you do not get lucky and get the drop that we want to get back to Flame Chaser. Here I, I opt to not do that, but it has been proven by the theory task to actually be faster. Maybe saves about 10 to 20 seconds overall depending on just how good of a green uh, 2 we get. And again, just in this section, we're trying to keep lag as low as possible, so you'll see I do, I'm doing as minimal firing as, I, as I'm able to. And we are going to be coming up on our the end of space, also known as Green 2. So when we get to green, I'll have some stuff to explain for you guys. Until then, another good spot for donations. Alright, so coming up, you see that uh, Seven Force and Green are back. We want to do just a little bit more damage to us. Now starting off uh, this part of the fight, uh, starting off with the, uh, the Green Runner is actually really, really good. This Blue Phoenix is the thing that we do not want to see. Tail Force is a jerk, or, or sorry, Phoenix Force is a jerk. And as you can see on screen, causes an absurd amount of lag. Same with Tail Force. Really the only ones we want to see here are Runner, Space Urchin, Gun. Uh, and there, another important thing is trying to kill Green on the left-hand side of the screen so his transition into the next section is a little bit faster. And coming up, we have a fan favorite. Shoutouts to uh, Cronu. We have Vector Man coming up. That's just what I myself would call, uh, call him all the time. This fight actually has three phases. Vector Man is phase three. And there's some cool tech for each of these. So on the first one, another reason we use Flame Chaser is uh, with the flame, you can actually uh, destroy enemy shots. And so we hover under the hammer as close as we can. 
And uh, sometimes if you're quick enough, you can get it so that it doesn't even drop on you. They already missed it by just about 150 damage. You know, it happens sometimes. And then here we have, you know, Snake Force, Anaconda Force, whatever you call it. Basically, we wait for the third transition, and we do a wall kick, and then we're hoping that it stays on screen the entire time. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Here we got a pretty poor uh, Snake Force, but, you know, it's bound to happen with the RNG in this game. Considering everything else has gone so well up until this point, we're not even going to complain. And now we have Vector Man, a.k.a. Big Ed Mame Boy, back once again. So if anyone wondered what he did after Vector Man 2, this is it. He became a villain. He just gave up. And here we're just going to do uh, jumping kicks again, just physical damage as much as possible onto the enemy. Uh, all while dodging its blasts. If we get hit by those, you actually get bumped up uh, a couple different times, which can lose some time over the run. All in all, a decent Vector Man. A decent fight there. Could be a little bit better. Could probably shave off about 10 seconds. And now we have what is my favorite section in the run, which is boss rush. There's just a ton of tech to talk about here. Uh, so first, uh, we're going to stand on top of uh, Heavy Vulcan, and we're going to do about four slides to the right, which uh, just instantly melts the health. And then you'll see I position myself here for this next fight. Uh, we're going to have one of the two uh, pink gunners come down, and we just want to throw them into the ground. Sometimes they'll bounce away from us, but you just want to kind of walk with them so you can figure out where they're going. Another cool part about the uh, boss rush is that you have a ton of animations going on the bottom of the screen, as well as uh, you know some really cool movement that just happens throughout the stages. Like here, you saw uh, all of those uh, little balls of light actually do damage to us. That's why we're doing jumping kicks through them because, uh, as stated before, with physical attacks during them, we are invincible. Uh, so here we have a pink claw or a lobster, and I've always called it pink claw. Basically, I just do a ton of physical damage with getting inside of the sprite and taking a damage boost and sliding repeatedly back and forth with those uh, half circle slides we've talked about. Coming up is uh, the scariest part of Space Force for everybody, and it's because of the Big Bang move, which uh, you really won't get to see here. But so essentially for Orange 2, we're going to wait on the right hand side of the screen, and as soon as he gets on, he's damageable. So we do three slides, and sometimes he throws it, sometimes he goes up top. Going up top is actually what we want to see happen. And then in turn, we're trying to bait him to actually jump. If he jumps, he has no iframes in the air, as you see. So we can get him into the second phase of his fight fairly fast. Now here you saw the Big Bang, but if we're actually right up against Orange, uh, you don't take any damage from the Big Bang. He only has uh, hurt boxes on the outward part of his attack, not the inside. And that was a strat that was found by, I want to say, I'm Pretty sure in Infamous, I'm found there. And then here, uh, we have Black, uh, the first part of the stage. Uh, we stand on a very specific pistol and bait him into our second section. And then I actually found that jumping off of the wall, landing on top of him in two standing slides is faster than outright shooting him. So it was another uh, strat that we pioneered for this run. And then here we have an oldie but a goodie. So, we have another bully to deal with, his name being Green. You know, he's betrayed us, he's a jerk throughout the entire run. But he can at least repay us by getting stunlocked here. Uh, so this stunlock basically uh, just forces him into iframes over and over again, and when he comes out, he's instantly put right back into damage, so he has no opportunity to uh, do any damage. If you see uh, on expert runs of this game, it's actually a little bit different. Um, he will break out with an uppercut attack and then actually go into a different series of attacks against you, so uh, we're not able to do that one, unfortunately. And this guy, man, we don't even get to fight him. Like, no, we don't know no backstory. I don't even know this dude's name. He just gets zapped. You fool. Alright, so we're at, finally at the final boss. Um, it's a, co a really cool strat here, actually. So you'll see on these third set of lights, we're going to set our uh, um, leftmost foot on the third light. And we're just going to begin to start shooting at the crystals. 
Uh, Golden Silver himself, you can't actually physically attack. Uh, well, you can, like, attack it, but it doesn't do any damage off of his health bar. It's actually all four of the uh, crystals from the beginning of the game that you're going to want to attack. Uh, it is RNG uh, on which attack we get here. Thankfully, we got the one that's the best. Uh, it causes the least amount of lag and uh, allows us to just mow down the enemy. And yeah, everybody, this has been Gunstar Heroes. Uh, hopefully, this gets in GDQ. I have a ton of fun running this game. Uh, you know, there's a whole lot to show off and talk about. Great spots for donations. Um, you know, beautiful music and some really, really great artwork in this game as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and we will see you at GDQ.